are in listen-only mode. Hi, and welcome to today's uh, Business Intelligence Virtual Chapter Session. We are very grateful to have uh, Dustin Ryan here today. He's going to talk about uh, getting started with Power BI and time uh, calculations. Uh, I do have a few an introductory slides to go over first, and this is Scott Murray. I'm one of the, the hosts for the Business Intelligence Virtual Chapter, one of the leaders for the Business Intelligence Virtual Chapter and hosting today's uh, webinar. So let me go through these couple of slides and then we'll jump right into the presentation. So. Um, just to kind of mention, of course, we've got uh, lots of different virtual chapters and location-specific chapters. There are plenty of those for folks to get involved in. You don't have to be involved in just one. You can be involved in many. And there is some crossover between some of the topics. So um, be sure to check out all the different virtual chapters um, that are out there and available. Um, just to kind of mention those, you can see here that uh, there are several upcoming uh, webinars that you would be probably more than likely want to join a couple of these. I guess this one's uh, taking place right now too with ours, so uh, we're, we're encouraged to have you here. Um, but there, what I did want to mention is that uh, you'll notice that there's the Excel Business Intelligence and the Business Ad Analytics Virtual Chapters. Those are definitely uh, companion chapters to the Business Intelligence uh, Virtual Chapter. Probably be very appropriate type of uh, sessions for you to, to go ahead and attend to. Um, of course, there's the SQL Saturday events. I actually just recently uh, attended one in uh, the uh, metro Atlanta area. That was BI specific. It was a great opportunity to get free learning. Normally, you just have to pay for lunch, and uh, you get plenty of uh, opportunities to hear from some of the top folks um, in our field. So you can see here we have some in North America, some uh, across the, uh, the globe. So definitely pay attention to those SQL Saturday events and um, be able to take a look at those when they come up. Um, volunteer opportunities. There's always opportunities for you to volunteer. We're uh, specifically to the Business Intelligence Virtual Chapter. If you ever would like to speak, please just send us an email. We'd love to have uh, different folks present um, their different specialties um, to the Business Intelligence Virtual Chapter, but there's also plenty of other opportunities um, for you to help with um, PASS. And PASS is a volunteer organization, so it is completely uh, dependent for the most part on volunteers to do different work. Another example I'll give you is that uh, within PASS, you can actually help to rate the presentations that are gonna take place at Summit. Um, that's one thing I've done for the past few years, actually rating the presentations um, for Summit. So that's just one of the other opportunities. Um, in order to volunteer though, just go ahead and pick the, uh, or go to the PASS uh, website, and then there's a, once you're in, within your profile, there's actually a section where you can mark off how you would like to uh, volunteer. So be sure to stay involved. And that kind of brings me to the last side before we jump into the presentation. There are many methods of staying in communication with PASS. You have LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and then of course, the past website. The thing to remember though is all this is pretty much free, um, so it's a great opportunity um, for you to be able to get lots of training, lots of information, and all do so at a very minimal cost. So at this time we're going to switch over. I'm going to jump over to um, handing the reins to Dustin, and he's going to talk for about 50 minutes or so. If you do have any specific questions, definitely feel free to post them in the Q&A area. There should be a questions box on your GoToWebinar uh, panel, and we will catch those at the end. So at this time, I'm going to actually stop sharing my screen, and I'm going to change the presenter over to Dustin. And once we do that, you all should see your screen flash. And okay, I think Dustin, I think I've got you as the presenter if you want to go ahead and take over. Dustin, I can't hear you if you're talking. Are you able to, Dustin, are you? If you all hold on a second, we're just trying to, I think we lost our speaker for a second here, so hold on a second.
And Dustin was actually just telling me right before the call that he's lost power several times today. So let me see what we can do with to get in touch with him. Hold on just a second here. And y'all just give me another minute when I still try to get in touch with Dustin to see what's going on. And I will let you know we were we did a sound check and an, uh, a video check right before the call, so we were working pretty well. So let's see here, trying a couple other things real quick. Try to get in touch with him. Y'all still bear with us. We're still trying to uh, to get Dustin back. Um, we'll see what we can do here for the next few minutes, and then we may have to postpone.
I am. Dustin, where are you? I apologize. I'm about to drive down to Comcast and unleash rage. Okay. <laughs> we can hear you loud and clear now, so. Okay. All righty. I hope uh, this, will, this will stay up. So I apologize for the, uh, the audio and, and video issues and um, hope this will hold Stuff up. happens. Okay. I just made you the presenter, so hopefully we can keep connectivity okay. and you're good to go all right so you should be seeing my slide deck here I am sure thing we are great okay well um, thank you Scott and I'd like to say thank you to Scott and Nathan for uh, you guys inviting me along come talk to you guys with about Power BI and, and time intelligence and always enjoy getting to chat with um, people in the community and getting to hang out and, and talk about um, technology especially cool technology like Power BI. So thank you for inviting me, letting me come and hang out. Of course. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about Power BI and time intelligence. And um, so Power BI is kind of the hot topic right now. I know that, that um, I spend a lot of time with my customers talking about Power BI. If you looked at my calendar for all the appointments um, regarding Power BI and discussing Power BI and how they can integrate that with their on-prem data and their cloud data, um, you probably wouldn't be able to count all the appointments that are on my calendar right now. Um, but just introduce myself a little bit. My name is Dustin Ryan. I'm a data platform solution architect at Microsoft. Um, previous to this, I was consulting with Pragmatic Works. So I've, I've only been on the job with Microsoft since November, so I'm, I'm brand new to Microsoft, but it's uh, been exciting so far. I work on the Education STU. That's the specialty teams unit, and so that means all of my customers are um, K-12 and higher ed institutions, and so I get to work with a lot of a lot of schools, and so that's pretty neat. Um, as a consultant with Pragmatic Works, I work at, at designing SQL Server data warehouses, designing BI solutions around analysis services, and um, that's primarily where most of my experience comes from. I'm also a blogger, speaker, and author, and so there's some of the the books that I've um, had the pleasure of working on and you're probably surprised that they're not picture books, they're not coloring books or pop-up books, but they are actual real-life SQL Server books, so take that uh, what you will. So today um, we'll be talking about, I want to give a, just kind of a brief introduction to Power BI. Um, we're not going to go too deep. Um, this is not an intro to Power BI webinar, but I just want to um, give you at least a little bit of a brief intro so you kind of understand what the tool is for those of you that are, are new to Power BI. We're going to talk about um, how do we set up our Power BI model for time intelligence, working with specific types of time calculations. We're going to look at designing some time intelligence formulas, and then we're going to look at some neat things um, with how we can interact with our time intelligence formulas. Um, within Power BI itself. So if you're not familiar with Power BI, Power BI is a cloud-based uh, data analytics, data exploration tool. And there's really three, three parts to Power BI that I want to introduce you to. There's the Power BI desktop tool, which I'm sure some of you probably have had experience with that. You can go download it right now for free at PowerBI.com. Just go to PowerBI.com, click the Products button up at the top right, and click on Power BI Desktop. It's a free download, and so most of what you can see, what you're going to see me doing today, is going to be within this desktop tool. And you can do the same exact things for free. And so the desktop tool is the is the authoring um, tool that you'll be using to build your dashboards. Um, you can uh, build your charts and all your visuals with just simply dragging and dropping um, from your list of fields onto the canvas. Um, so you can design some very cool dashboards, very interactive dashboards, without um, having to write any code. And so you don't have to be a, a trained analysis services consultant or, or know even a ton about Power BI to be able to get in there and do some very cool things with um, the Power BI tool. Um, now, once you've built your Power BI dashboards in the Power BI desktop, then you can publish to the Power BI service. And Power BI service is the uh, cloud-based part of the tool where you publish to powerbi.com, and you can access the dashboards and the reports you design on powerbi.com. 
on PowerBI.com, you can create your dashboards, which you can consider like that single pane of glass where you can look at all of the important metrics that you care about. PowerBI.com is also where you will collaborate with other members of your team. You publish your Power BI dashboards on PowerBI.com. You share them with members of your team. You give your, your other users access to the reports, to the dashboards, and even access to the data sets that you built in the Power BI desktop tool. So when you publish to PowerBI.com, you publish the data set, you publish the reports. And then within the browser, uh, other users, other team members can then create their own reports based on the data set that you have published. Um, so they don't even have to have the desktop tool downloaded. Once that data set is published, they can create reports within the browser itself on PowerBI.com. Um, so it's very cool. Um, the last part is you can stay connected to Power, your Power BI dashboard from any device. So there are native apps for the iPad, for the iPhone, for your Android device, for your Windows device. So it doesn't matter which type of mobile device you have. You can build all of your dashboards right. You can view all of your dashboards right from any of these native apps. And so it's um, very neat how you can open up on your iPhone, which I have an iPhone. Don't, don't tell anybody at Microsoft. Um, but I have an iPhone, and so I can view all of my dashboards on right in my phone. And one of the really cool things that that I like to tell people about that you can do with it with your dashboards in the um, mobile device um, applications is that you can create a notification on your phone. So if I'm really interested in a, in a specific metric and I want to get notified when that metric reach a, reaches a particular threshold, I can set a notification on my phone and Power BI will tell me when that threshold is, is met or achieved. Um, and so my phone will vibrate and ding at me and tell me that, look, this number has reached this certain threshold and I need to be aware of it. So that's um, pretty neat. So you, you have the three pieces of Power BI there. You've got the desktop tool. That's where we're going to spend 95% um, of our time today in the desktop tool. Then you've got the Power BI service. That's where you publish your dashboards and you share your, your content. You collaborate with other members of your team. And then you have the mobile apps, and that's how you can view your dashboards from, from anywhere, where, whether you're on an iPad, an iPhone, an Android device, or a Windows device. Okay, um, so today we're going to be talking specifically about how Power BI works um, with our um, bringing in our data into our desktop tool, and then how we can leverage some of the very powerful DAX formulas to create some really neat time intelligence type calculations. Um, so some of the functions that we're going to be looking at today are going to be functions like dates, year-to-date, dates, quarter-to-date, month-to-date, same period last year, dates between first date, last date, and if we have time, maybe we'll look at previous year, previous quarter, previous month. Um, but uh, these are the, the specific time intelligence functions that we're going to be looking at. Um, if you're not familiar with these, don't worry about it. I'm going to discuss them as we go through them. And then also at the end of the at the end of the session, um, um, I'm going to post on my blog um, links to resources that will help you become more familiar with these functions and how you can use them in, in your solutions. All right. So let me pull up Power BI Desktop. So if you're brand new to Power BI um, and, and you haven't get started, um, the tool I'm going to be using can be downloaded on PowerBI.com. So if you just go to PowerBI.com, click the Products button up here at the top, and click on Power BI Desktop, and that will take you to this screen. You just click Download, and that's where you can download the desktop tool. And so that's what I'm going to be using today, which I have it right here. All righty. Okay, and so when you open Power BI Desktop, this is going to be basically what you see the very first time. It's just a blank canvas. Um, you may have a little yellow pop-up window here that will um, give you some links to some helpful resources. Um, so that's also um, a good place to get started too. Um, so the data that I'm going to be working with today is some, some junk data that I've got here. This is not uh, real data, so I'm not worried about any privacy issues or anything like that. But since I work in education and I work with a lot of schools and, and they're interested in viewing metrics around grades and um, enrollments and how many kids are coming to school, what are their graduation rates, things like that, um, this is the kind of data that we have here. Um, and so it has some things in here like the names of the students, uh, the names of the teachers, what class they're in, what subject it's related to, their assignments, duties, specific standards that those uh, assignments address, and then points scored and the grades they've achieved on that. So that's the data that we're working with here today. And my data is in Excel. So 
one of the first thing, the very first thing that you want to do when you're getting started with Power BI is you want to click the Get Data button. And you see I've got it up here on the left. This is where we're going to select um, the types of data sources that we want to use. So I'm going to click the little drop down button here. Okay, so you've got a, a few different options here, Excel, SQL Server, Analysis Services, you've got CSV files, you can screen scrape data off of a web page, which is pretty neat, OData feeds, you can even write a, a blank uh, power query here. If I click the More button here, you'll see the full list of all of the, the different types of data sources here. So it's quite extensive, they're adding um, types to this uh, data source list all the time, so you've got even things in here like Teradata, Sybase, um, Hadoop. Uh, SAP, HANA, um, all kinds of different things, Azure, Spark, um, so a very extensive list of data sources. In my case, I'm just interested in Excel, so I'm going to click Connect. Okay, and the, uh, the, the file that I'm interested in here is going to be, let's see, where did I put this thing at? Let's see, I'm sorry, I've had a Brain fart there for a second. Okay, yep, I remember where I put it at now. It's on my desktop. It's in this folder here. Okay, student assignment grade data. So I'm going to click open here. And this will just take a moment while it establishes a connection to the file and, and, and gives us a little preview of the data here. And uh, you'll see the sheets that are listed in the Excel file here. If I click the checkbox next to the sheet, I'll, you'll see that I get a little preview here of my data. Now, I, if my data is fine, I can click load here and it will automatically load this into the Power BI model. Um, but I can also click the edit button here if I want to edit this. So maybe if I want to apply some massaging to the data, some transformation to the data like um, exclude certain columns or add or create concatenated columns or exclude rows of data or pivot the data, if you want to do anything like that, you can click the edit button here and that will open up the Power Query editor. So if you're familiar with Power Query in Excel, you'll notice that this is going to look very familiar. Um, so it just looks just like it does in Excel where you can um, choose which columns you want to keep if you want to exclude columns or if you want to remove columns. Um, that's something that I would recommend that you do if you have columns in your data that you want to exclude. Um, click remove columns because we want to keep our model as small as possible because all of this is going to be stored in memory while we're designing it. So, um, and, and then also once we publish to it, so that's going to be something that we want to, to make sure we do exclude the columns we're not interested in. Um, and in this particular case, I think everything looks, looks fine. The data type looks correct. So these are numbers, uh, these are decimals. So I just wanted to make sure that these are correct. And I think everything looks fine here. So once you've finished applying the massaging and the transformations to the data, you can click the close and apply button up here on the left. And that will actually import the data here into our model. Okay, so that's an example of, of doing that with the Excel file. Um, now, what I'd really like to do is bring in some SQL Server data um, that maybe we can relate to this as well. So I'm going to type in localhost here. And I've got my AdventureWorks DW here, and I'm running the SQL Server 2016 CTP 3.3. So if you haven't downloaded that, you can go out and, and download that. And I'm going to click uh, Fact Internet Sales, and I'm going to select Related Tables. And that's just going to look at the referential integrity in the database and, and identify the tables that have the foreign key relationships to this fact table. Uh, so in this particular case, I'm going to leave Sales Territory. That looks good. Dim Promotion, Dim Product. Dim date, dim customer, and, and I don't really care about the currency in this case, so I'm going to unselect that. And that looks fine. I'm going to get also rid of the internet sales reason and just leave the internet sales. And I'm going to click load here. And this is going to import all those, all those tables as well. And this should just take a, a brief moment. It shouldn't take too long. There's not too much data in those tables. Okay. All right, that looks fine. And so there's three there's three views that you have in Power BI Desktop. You have the relationships view, which you can see the relationships between all of the different tables in your model. Let's just take a moment to show up here. And you'll notice that it created the relationships for me because it, it detected those foreign key relationships, and it did that it did that for me. Um, so that was nice. 
Um, then you also have the data view, and that's where you can kind of see a preview of your data. If you're familiar with Power Pivot, um, you'll notice that this kind of looks a little similar. Um, so Power Pivot is, if you're familiar with that, you'll you'll notice that this looks similar. Um, and I can see, I can click on the tables here and get a preview of the different uh, the different tables we've imported and and the data in those tables as well. This is where you'll primarily spend your time um, adding new calculations, new measures, new calculated columns, um, formatting the data, um, different things like that. That's where you're going to spend. This is where you'll spend most of most of your time doing that. Then you also have the report view, and this is where you'll design your um, your reports, where you build your charts, build your visuals, do different things like that. Now, um, the first thing that we want to do um, that I want to show you here is I've got a table over here in the date the date dimension, okay? And I have a column over here that is full date alternate key. And if I go over here into my data view and I switch over to our dim date table and I click on full date alternate key, we can tell that this is a data type um, of date. I can see that up here in the top left. Um, and so I'm gonna go back to my report view and I want to show you that if I add this to this report, all I'm going to do is just click the little checkbox here next to full date alternate key. And over here on the right, let me turn on my zooming tool here. Over here on the right, you'll notice here that I automatically have four levels in, um, in kind of a hierarchical format. You see I've got the year, the quarter, the month, and the date, and it did all that automatically for me. Um, this is a relatively new feature in Power BI where it creates the hierarchy for you. It's um, in the last couple of month, month or two, um, I, I forget because they, they roll out the, the updates to Power BI so frequently, but you'll notice here that it did that automatically for me. Um, now this behavior um, can be controlled by a setting here. If I go to File and go to Options, Settings, go to Options, and I go to my Data Load, You'll see here that there's a, 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 a toggle button here that says auto date time. And that's that behavior that we're seeing. And so when this button here is checked and it, and it is by default, what happens is um, you don't actually see this behind the scenes, but uh, a little shadow table is created for each date type column that exists in our, in our model here. So, um, in the, in the date dimension, I have the full date alternate key right here. It's a date time data type. So behind the scenes, a little shadow date table is being created to support this column here. And that table includes things like the year number, the month number, uh, the, the month year to help sort the months. It includes the quarters, it includes the dates, it includes all that, that hierarchical information to support that date. So that way, when we come into our report, and we click full date alternate key, it can do this for us automatically on the fly. I don't have to do any extra heavy lifting to create this date hierarchy. Now, if you if you go back to your options and settings, you go to options and you go to your data load, you can turn this off and it will no longer create those shadow date tables to support this hierarchy here and, and you, won't, you won't have the hierarchy functionality. So if you wanted to turn this off, you can, um, but I, I prefer to leave it on because this hierarchy gives us some neat functionality here. Uh, you can also turn it off here in the, in the visual itself. If I click the little drop down list here and I click this full date alternate key, that will turn off the hierarchy. And so now this is just a regular um, date time field here on this chart. So what I'll do is I'm going to bring in the uh, fact internet sales amount. Where is it at? There it is, sales amount. And I add this here. And it's just a regular old um, column chart. And so um, you are seeing one bar for each date on here. Uh, if I go back and I change this to the hierarchy, what we see is now it's broken down by year. And because we have the multiple levels of the hierarchy in here, I can turn on the drill down capabilities of this chart. So up here in the top right, you'll see here I've got this little downward arrow button here. This allows me to toggle on the drill down behavior. So if I turn this on, you'll see that it's turning gray now, in, which indicates that the drill down capability is now turned on for this visual. And so when I click on 2013, what I'll see is a drill down to the quarter level. 
And if I click on Q4, I'm going to see a drill down to the month level. And if I click on December, what I'll see is a drill down into the day level. And so um, when we have this hierarchical um, layout here, it gives us the ability to drill down into the multiple levels of, of this hierarchy. Um, very, very cool. Um, now I can go back up just by clicking the drill up button, and I can go back up to the top level if, if I want to. You can also customize the, the hierarchy here as well. So maybe I don't really care about the quarter uh, breakdown, so I can just click the little X next to quarter, so that way when I drill down into the year, I go straight down to the months, so I no longer see that quarter breakdown. Or if I want to prevent my users from seeing the, seeing the day level, then I can just turn that off too, so that way they can only drill down from the year um, and down to the day level, or down to the month level, rather. Um, so you, you do have the ability to customize that. Um, so let's go back to this and, and add, the, add all the levels back in there. So now I'm back up to the year, the quarter month level, okay? All right, so let's go create um, a couple calculations here. I'm going to go back to my data view over here, and I'm going to create a real simple calculation that's just going to sum up my sales amount. I'm going to click the new measure button up here in the top left. This is going to create a new calculated measure for us. And I'm just going to call this, type the name of it here, we'll call this total sales amount. And I'm going to type equal sign, and then this is where you start typing your DAX formula. Um, and so I just want to type in sum because I want to sum this up. And I want to sum the sales amount. Uh, let's go over here to factor net sales. And I'm going to select sales amount here and close parentheses and hit enter. Okay. And this is going to create that measure for us. And, and you'll see here that I accidentally created it here in the dim date table. And um, I can actually move this too. So I've got this measure selected here. If I wanted to move it to my fact table, I can click the home table button up here in the top and tell it I want the home table to be fact internet sales. And that will move the measure to the other table for me so I don't have to, to delete it and recreate it or do anything like that. Okay, so I can see my, my new calculated field down here in the bottom right. I can tell it's a calculated field because I've got the little calculator icon there. So that looks good. And I can control the formatting here. So if I want to format this um, as in English dollars, I can do that, select that here. This part up here at the top looks very, very similar to Excel. So those of you that, that know Excel have probably noticed some similarities here. So I'll format this um, as, a, as a currency. And let me go back to my visuals here. And I can remove this implicit measure sales amount. And I can add the total sales amount here. You can see that here. I'm just going to click the checkbox here and add that to it. All right, so now we've got this explicit measure here. Um, and, the, and the difference between the explicit measures and the implicit measures is that with explicit measures, uh, we are manually controlling the method of aggregation behind the scenes in the formula that we write. So when I created the formula, I explicitly specified use the sum formula. And so that means that the measure is going to be aggregated using sum. Uh, when I use an implicit measure, like the sales amount column here, which you can tell that this is an implicit measure because of the little sigma icon here, uh, that means when I add this here, I can control the method of aggregation through this drop-down button. So if I want to average it, I could do that. If I want to get the min, the max, I could do that, and I can select those things there. Um, where I can't do that with the total sales amount because that's an explicit measure, the method of aggregation is controlled in the formula that we write. And so the time calculation formulas that we're going to create, create based off this total sales amount are all going to be explicit measures because we're going to be writing explicit calculations to do the aggregation for us. All right, so let's, uh, let's get rid of this here. I'm going to go back over here to our, um, fat, our data view, and I want to create a new calculated measure. And I want to create a year-to-date calculated measure. Okay, so I'll call this year-to-date sales amount, okay? And whenever you're creating a calculated uh, measure, chances are you're going to be using the calculate formula. And basically what the calculate expression here does is it tells us to, that we want to evaluate um, a particular formula in a single cell and, and respect whatever filters may be, apply, may be applied to it. And so I want to calculate, and you'll see that when I hit the open bracket, the IntelliSense here is pretty good. It picked the only um, the only calculated measure we've created so far. And so if I hit tab, 
it will finish typing the rest of that for me. So the IntelliSense DAX works pretty well and, and will basically almost type it, type the whole formula for you. All right. And so I want to specify a filter here and the filter I want to use is going to include the dates YTD function. And this formula here returns a set of dates um, beginning at the year to the current date. And so the second argument I need to specify here is the, the date column I want to use. And it needs to be a date time data type. And the date time data type column that I have here in our date dimension is the full date alternate key. So I'm going to specify that. So I'm going to close bracket twice. And I'm going to apply the, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to hit enter here to create the, the calculation. You'll see down here in the bottom right, we've got our new calculated measure, YTD sales amount. I'm going to um, apply the formatting here. Make sure this is formatted as English dollars. All right. And I'm going to go back over here to our report. And I want to add my YTD sales amount here to this chart. Okay. So let's drill down into this. I'm going to click 2013. And we'll see here that we're getting some aggregation here. Okay. Our year-to-date aggregation. Um, now, when I start looking at this, uh, this doesn't look exactly right. Um, so there's there's an issue here. What I would expect to see, if this was a real year-to-date measure, I would expect to see a straight line, right? Because the, the next day sales should be aggregated to the previous, and then the, the next day sales should be aggregated to the previous. Um, so this doesn't look exactly right. So um, it appears that our year-to-date is not being calculated correctly. Um, so we need to actually make a change to our model over here to to allow these time calculations to, to work correctly. So I'm going to go back over to my relationships view over here. And this has to do with the relationships that are created between our fact internet sales table and our dim date table. Now you can see the relationships here that exists. Um, there's some active relationships which are the solid, solid bar or the solid lines here. And there's some inactive relationships here that are the dotted lines. If I want to view all of these relationships, I can, I can just open this up and I can double click on it. Or I can click the manage relationships button up here in the top. And so I'm going to click Manage Relationships, and this will let me see all of the relationships that exist here in the model. Um, we can see the inactive relationships here. These are the unchecked boxes, and, and we don't really care about those for this example. And we can see the active relationship here between fact internet sales and dim date um, based on the due date key. All right. Now I need to change this here, and so I'm going to select it and click Edit. And the issue here is that um, the date dimension uses a smart key, which is an integer data type, and it's related to the due date key on the fact table, which is also an integer type. For our date calculations to work, the relationship between these two tables needs to be based on a column that is a date time data type. And so because these are integers here, uh, we're going to have some issues with our time calculation. So I want to change this to be a relationship between columns that are date time data types. So I have a full date alternate key here that is on this date table, which I can use. So I'm going to select that. And I also down here at the end, I have some columns here that are the same uh, date data type. And so I'm going to just click the order date. I want this to actually be based on the order date. So I'm going to select order date here and make sure I've got full date alternate key here. And that's going to create this relationship here based on date time data types. Okay, so I'm going to click OK here. All right, and we can see here that now the change in the relationship um, is being reflected. Okay, so let's click close here. All right, let's go back to our chart over here. Come on now, Just bear with me while it's doing that here. Okay, and we, what we can see here is that um, this is going to update our visual. So let's go back to the hierarchy view. All right, and let's see. Let me change the formatting here on the x-axis to be uh, categorical because I want to see all the different columns. All right. And let's drill down here. All right. And so now we're seeing that gradual increase. And so that tells me now that our year-to-date calculation is now working correctly um, instead of being uh, you know, up and down, up and down, up and down, what we were looking for was that gradual increase. And, and so this looks more like what I would expect from a year-to-date type of visual here. Okay. And so for you to get your time calculations working correctly, you need to make sure that your relationships are based on a date-time data type um, field. Okay. 
So let's uh, let's get rid of this here. I'm going to remove this now, and let's go back to our, our our data view over here. And we've got our YTD sales amount. Uh, similarly, I can also create a, a month to date sales amount um, using a, a very similar formula. So we'll call this month to date sales amount. Okay, we'll use our calculate function again here, and you'll see here that the uh, the IntelliSense is helping me write this calculation, and so it's the, to the total sale, our month-to-date sales amount is going to be based on our total sales amount measure, which you see here. And instead of using dates YTD function, I'm going to use dates MTD function. Okay, so we're going to specify our full date alternate key column again for the dates MTD, and then I'm going to close parenthesis, close parenthesis, and now I've got a dates MTD um, measure. All right, and let's uh, format this here. All right, and let's go back to our visual and let's let's create our visual again. I'm going to select full date alternate key here. All right, let's resize this a little bit, and I'm going to bring in our month to date sales amount and our YTD. I want to uh, display them side by side so that way we can kind of look at them together. Okay. So let's drill down here to the next level. Let's go down into 2013, and let's go down to the day level so we can see um, the different metrics side by side. And so you can see here that the month to date is the, the green bars and the year to date is the, the black bars. Um, we can also turn on the data labels here. So I'm just going to make sure I've got my chart selected. Click the little paintbrush button here, turn on my data labels so I can see them side by side, see the numbers actually on the chart. That may make things a little easier for your end users if they can see the, the data labels there as well. Okay, so we've got our, our YTD time calculation. We've got our month to, time, month to date calculation. Let's go back to our chart, our, back to our data view over here. And what I want to do now is I want to create a previous period sales calculation. So that's a very common one that we, that we see um, our users using. Um, so I'm going to create a new measure here. All right, we're going to call this previous period sales. All right, we're going to use our calculate function just like we did before. And this is going to be based on our total sales amount. And instead of using dates YTD now or dates MTD, we're going to use same period last year. Okay, so I'm using the same period last year function. And what this function does is it returns the same time frame just in the previous year. And so all I need to do is specify which column that I want to use that includes my date, which is the full date alternate key. So I'm just going to close parenthesis, close parenthesis. And see now that, that uh, we've, got, we've got our calculation here written to calculate the total sales amount for the same period last year based on this date. All right, I'm just going to click enter here. All right, let's go back to our visual here just to kind of make sure this is working. And I'm going to get rid of my, my MTD sales here and just leave just the, the year-to-date sales. And I'm going to add my previous period sales here too. All right, so there's our previous period sales. And let's get rid of the YTD sales amount. So it's not a, not a good comparison to do here. And I, and I didn't apply the formatting here, so it's got the different formatting here. So what I'd like to do is um, format this so we can look at them side by side and have the, have the nice formatting a little bit better. All right, let's go back to our, our report now that we've got the better formatting. There we go. Let's drill back up so we can look at the months. Okay, so now we can easily look at our total sales amount, which is for this period, compare it to our, our previous period sales amount. We can see that um, in this quarter here, where we're looking at July, August, and September, we can see that this quarter we're obviously doing better than we were at the same time last year, so that's, that's a good thing. Okay, so now that we've got our, our previous period and our current, Current period, um, we can easily create a measure now that calculates the year-over-year -year growth. Okay, so let's create a new measure here. All right, call this year-over-year -year growth. All right, and I want to subtract the total sales amount. 
or actually try to subtract the previous period sales from the total sales amount. So you notice there that as I was creating my formula, I didn't actually have to type anything except the name of the name of the measure here. I just selected the measures over here from our list of fields. So I just selected I want to take my total sales amount minus my previous period sales amount in order to figure out what it, what is my growth from the previous year. And I'll click the drop down button here and and format this as the, the English currency. All right, so now we've got our growth. Where did I put it at? Year of, I called it, a, oh, got to scroll down. There it is, year over year growth. So now I can display that here on the chart as well and we can see what our how our growth looks here. Okay, so we've, we've looked at creating a year to date, we looked at creating a month to date, we've looked at creating our previous period calculation, we've even been able to calculate our, our, um, our year over year growth based on that. And we can also um, figure out what is our, our, our previous year, year to date sales. So if I create a new measure here, and we'll call this uh, previous year to date sales amount. We'll use our calculate function here. Now instead of specifying the total sales amount, I want to calculate my year to date sales amount. And so I'm gonna select my year to date sales amount measure over here. And I'm going to use the same period last year function again. Okay. Specify the full date alternate key. And I'll hit enter now. And so now I've got a formula that combines our year to date sales amount measure with the same period last year. And so you can see here that I'm effectively stacking these calculations. So I built my year to date sales amount measure here. And then I'm going to use this calculated measure in my previous year-to-date sales amount. All right, so let's, uh, let's drag that up here. I'm gonna add a line chart here. I'm just gonna select line chart. All right, make this a little bit bigger. Let's add the full date alternate key to this. All right, and I wanna make sure that this is displaying the full date alternate key. I don't necessarily wanna display the hierarchy here in my line chart. And I wanna add my year-to-date sales amount here. So we can display this as a line. So that makes sense, right? We'd expect it to start over each year. And I want to show my previous year-to-date sales side by side. Okay, and so now we can easily kind of see the trends of the years, how our sales are doing this year compared to the previous year. So the black line is the previous year-to-date sales amount and the green line is the current year-to-date sales amount. Um, now, if I drill up over here on this other, other chart that we've got up here at the top, um, this, we can take advantage of the, net, the natural cross-filtering behavior that we have between all the visuals on this chart. So if I turn off my drill-down capabilities, and, and now this just acts as a regular filter, and I select the year 2012, what we'll see is that this chart here acts as a filter for this chart here. And so now I'm only looking at the year 2012, and I can see the months. And I can again, I can quickly see just by looking at this that um, for our current year-to-date sales amount, we're kind of trending under where we were last year. Now, if I come over here and select 2013 in this top chart, we'll see that uh, for the year 2013, our year-to-date sales amounts are trending much higher than they were uh, previously. And as I as I run my mouse along this chart, you you probably have noticed that. That I'm, that I'm gonna see the, the detailed metric breakdown for the year-to-date sales amount and the previous year-to-date sales amount here in this in this chart, okay? Now, I've got one more calculation that I think I'm gonna show you um, very quickly, and um, this one's gonna combine some, some other functions here that we haven't looked at, and then I wanna show you one more thing before um, we, we we're out of time here. Um, so I'm gonna create a new measure here, and this is gonna give me uh, the blank uh, formula bar here. And if I click the little drop down arrow, oops, I guess I clicked away and it, and it uh, got rid of it for me. So let me click new measure. And I'm gonna click the little drop down button over here on the right. And that gives some more space here to work with. And what I wanna do is I wanna create a calculation that shows me my rolling 90 day total sales amount. Okay, so we'll call this rolling 90 day total sales amount. And so I wanna see what are my sales amount for the past 90 days, okay? And we'll call this, uh, we'll start with the calculate function here. And the measure we're gonna use is the total sales amount. And the function I wanna use here is 
the dates between function. Okay, and the dates between function allows me to specify what is the first date and what is the last date that we want to use for this calculation. So the first argument is going to be the column that has our dates in it, and in this case it's our dim date table, full date, alternate key column. And I'm going to put a comma here. And now the second argument is going to be what is the start date for this range. Now in this case we want to use um, the first date, um, the first date function here. Oops, go back a little bit here. All right, there it is, our first date. And we're going to then use the, let me hit shift enter, the date add function here because I want to navigate actually backwards um, 90, day, 90, um, well, 90 days from here. So I want to use date add. And I'm going to select here. Uh, last date here, um, and so this is going to return. The, the reason I'm using the last date here is because this is going to return the last date no matter which level I'm at. So if I'm at the year level, if I'm looking at the year 2012, I want to be 90 days from the last day in the year. But if I'm looking at you know March, I want to select 90 days from the last day in March. So that's why I'm using the last date function here. Okay, it's going to be the last date from the dim date, full date, alternate key. Okay. And then the second argument in the date add function here, oops, I hit enter, so it um, did all this for me here. Let me hit shift enter. And the, uh, let me uh, expand this a little bit here. I want to go back 90 days, and so I'm going to actually put minus 89. And I want to go back 89 days, and so I need to specify what is the level, what is the interval here. So I could specify 89 months if I wanted to, but I want to do 89 days. Okay, all right, and close parentheses, and then I'm going to put in a um, another close parentheses here, and that's going to be our start date, 89 days from the last date in whatever period we happen to be looking at, and I'm going to put a comma here, and then the end date is going to be the last date, I'm going to use the last date function again, dim date, and oops, full date alternate key, there we go. And so that's going to be our end date, whatever last date is for the, the period we're looking at. Okay, and then I'm going to close parentheses there. All right, so I think that's all we need for that. So I'm going to hit enter here. Hopefully the syntax here will jive and we'll be good there. Okay, it looks fine. Looks like we've got our rolling 90-day rolling total sales amount. I'm going to format this here as an English dollar here. All right, look good. Let's go back to our visual. Let's put this here on a, on a chart. Let me uh, make this a little bit smaller here so we have some room to work with. All righty. And actually, let's uh, change this to a line chart. So I'm going to change this to a line chart. I'm going to put our rolling 90-day total in here. All right, there it is. And let's put the full date alternate key there um, as the axis. And let's change this to um, not show it as the hierarchy, but show it as just a single date so I can see this as a, as a line chart on here. Okay, yep, I want to see the days. Show me all the days. It's not showing me all the days. Let me go back to the, the column chart here. There we go. So that's showing us the day breakdown of that. And then I can drill down into it and see what is the previous 90 days totals for each quarter. And I can drill down also and, and see the, the previous 90 day sales amount for um, that, that note, uh, those months as well. So we can kind of see how are we doing from a 90 day sales type of, type of standpoint. Okay, just got a few uh, more minutes here and, and then uh, we'll open it up for questions. One other thing that I wanted to show you here is the, the R visuals capabilities in Power BI. And that really opens up the possibilities with Power BI. And if you're not familiar with R, I suggest you um, start getting familiar with it. Microsoft recently purchased Revolution Analytics and are integrating their R technology in, across the data platform in SQL Server, uh, Big Data, um, Azure Machine Learning, and even Power BI. And so the, currently the R scripting feature is in preview in Power BI. So if you've got the latest version of Power BI Desktop, you can enable this setting by going to Options and Settings, go to Options, 
go to R scripting, there's a couple of things you need to do here. First, you need to turn on the preview feature here to use an R script to plot a visual in the canvas. So you need to turn that on. And you need to select where you've installed Revolution R open here. And you can download this here. I've got a blog post on it that I'll, that I'll provide you. But um, you can um, install this. And once you've got it installed, you need to put the path here to your um, R home directory. And once you've enabled that, then you have the ability to um, add the R visuals to your report. So you should see the little R icon up here in the top, right? We can add an R visual in here. And the reason R is so powerful is it allows you to enable some advanced type of analytics in your reports, do some advanced statistical analysis, um, do some really, really cool things. Um, and so what I want to do here is I want to plot in my year-over-year um, -year growth. All right. So let's do this. Let's bring in our year-over-year -year growth. I'm going to add it to the visual here. And you'll notice that as I'm adding it here to the visual, you'll see that the fields are actually being added here in this data frame object. So if you're not familiar with R, a data frame, you can think of it as basically like a table. It can include multiple columns of different data types. So it's sort of like a table. And we can use this data frame here um, in our, our R script. And so as I add the columns here to this um, script, you'll see that they're going to be automatically added here to the data frame. So I'm going to add in the uh, year-over-year uh, -year growth. I also want to add in the calendar year. Let's add in the sales territory country and maybe the uh, the promotion name. Let's add English promotion name. All right, and so you can see they're all being added here. Okay, and I'm going to create a coplot type visual and I want to reference these data sets and, and this is how you'll uh, reference those fields year over year growth okay and that's a tilde right there and so this is I'm saying I want to plot my year over year growth on the uh, y-axis and I want to plot my uh, calendar year on the x-axis and I want to view this by and that's a pipe there that's a pipe uh, character there I want to view this by sales territory country and by English promotion name. All right, and then I'm going to I'm going to put a comma there, and I want to um, make sure these data points are are red. So I'm going to type in red here. That that argument is col equals red. That means the color we're going to use is red. And I'm going to type change the type here. And I'm going to put a, a O here, type of O, and so that's going to be a line chart um, overlaid with dots, okay? And I'm going to close the parentheses here and then click the little run button here. Okay, and so this should take just a moment to run. Oh, I need to click the enable script visuals up the top. Forgot to do that. Should do that first, so and click the run button here, and it's going to create our R visual for us. And we'll see now we have this nifty little little R visual here, and I can re resize this and then click Run again to recreate the R visual, and it'll make it a little bit little bit bigger here. And we can create a, a chart that we normally wouldn't be able to create in Power BI, a chart of multiples. And so what I'm seeing here is my year-over-year -year time calculation being displayed for each country and each promotion that we've run, and you can see the trends here. And so we're, we're able to create some very cool visuals with R. And so I kind of want to just expose you to that. One of the really cool things that you have here uh, with this visual here is that it also respects other, other slicers here. So if I come in here and I select, I just want to look at this for no discount. I can click that slicer here. And what it will actually do is recreate our R visual and respect the slicer at the same time. So even if I've got um, other charts on here um, for our... Um, and slicers and things like that. I can bring in my total sales amount. And I come in here and I select um, something like, a, a, let's see, volume discount. If I select that in this pie chart here, you'll see here that my R visual will also respect these other the other cross-filtering behavior that we have here on the chart. So very, very cool stuff that we have coming with the R. Um, now this feature is currently in preview, uh, so it works great in Power BI Desktop I've seen, um, but it's not fully implemented in the Power BI service yet, so just be aware of that, that if you publish this year, I don't think all of the cross-filtering behavior is quite there yet, um, but it's just in preview here, but I wanted to you know, show you 
the kinds of different things you can do with Time Intelligence and Power BI, how you can get started with that, implementing really cool time intelligence calculations using DAX, and then also how you can leverage those time calculations using R in your, in your Power BI desktop. Um, so uh, thank you uh, again for Scott and Nathan for having me and, and, and giving me the opportunity to do this and talk with you guys about the really cool things that you can do in Power BI with the time intelligence in R. Um, and then at the end here, what I'll do is I'm going to uh, make some of these resources available. Here I've got uh, some links here in my PowerPoint slide deck of getting started with R visuals and Power BI. I've also got some other links here that you can um, take a look at. Um, and so I'll make the slide deck available as well. You can also go out to my blog, sqldustc.com. I've got a whole blog here on getting started with R visuals and Power BI that you can look at. I've also got a, a nifty little blog here on the uh, time calculations, DAX calculations. And so some of the time calculations that we walk through here are in these blogs here, 10 DAX calculations um, that you can uh, also take a look at if you're interested. Um, otherwise, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at SQL Dusty, and I think uh, we'll uh, open this up for questions if we've got a few minutes, Scott. We sure do. We do have a few minutes, and there was actually there were several questions that are in the, the Q&A area. I did try to answer um, several of them as they came along, um, so if you want to jump over to the, the questions panel, and if you, you know, want to pick some out to answer, that would be great. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Let me pull it up over here and see if we've got a few in here. Okay. And you might want to uh, check the, uh, or uncheck the show answer questions because then that way you won't see the ones that I answered. All right. So is that in the uh, chat or? It would be, you should see it under questions. And let's, uh, I've got them, let me make you an organizer real quick. I think when you jump back on, it didn't. Uh, I didn't reset you guys in organizer. Now you should see it in your panel. And if not, I can just ask them to you right, if that's easier. Okay, let's see. All right. I've got a question here. It says, can time duration be expressed in hours and minutes instead of decimals when creating a measure to calculate average time duration? Um, so that question came from Eduardo. Um, so Eduardo, I think um, you can control the formatting of the time here. Um, I don't have any time data types or time data types in here, but you can control the, the data type formatting up here. Um, so if you come in here, you can control the formatting here and, and display this as time. And so that way when you use that or that um, column in your reports, you should see it formatted as a time. Let's see, you have a question here from Kristen. She says, is Power BI service going to be the only place, place to publish? Currently, Kristen, right now, that is the only place that you're going to be, be able to publish your Power BI reports. Um, although uh, the Power BI team did recently announce that Power BI reports that are published to the Power BI service, um, you'll be able to, you should be able to soon, I know they're currently working on it, connect to those Power BI models from Excel. Um, so that will give you some additional flexibility there. Let's see, and then uh, um, Ashish asked, can Power BI Desktop, um, can Power BI Desktop have any data size, does it have any data size retrieval limits? Um, and so that's going to be dependent upon whether you're um, using Power BI Free or Power BI Pro. So the Power BI Pro SKU allows up to a 10 gig uh, data model, I believe, I believe is the restriction on that. Um, and the free version allows a one gig um, data size model. Now you have to keep in mind that um, Power behind the scenes really is just analysis services tabular. And so it uses the X velocity engine. Um, and so you're going to receive excellent, excellent compression on your data model. So you can fit quite a large amount of data even, um, and once it's compressed, it still be quite, um, still be very far under that one gig or 10 gig data limit. All right, let's see, John says, is there any preference between using explicit or implicit calculations? John, it really just depends on what your requirements are for the measure. So if you want your users to be able to um, change between sum or average or min or max on a particular measure, um, you would want to use the um, implicit. Um, the, the, one of the gotchas there with the implicit measures, John, is that um, users may accidentally select an incorrect um, method of aggregation, so they could maybe confuse themselves a little bit that way. If you want to uh, manually control 
um, which uh, how the measure how the measures are aggregated you would want to create the explicit measure so that way you as the um, you know the, the developer of the power bi workbooks um, have have explicit control over that okay um, but, 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 let's see uh, does time intelligence work with fiscal calendars um, so some of the built-in so the, like the built-in functions we looked at like year to date and month to date are um, are are, are only enabled for the traditional calendars, but I'm sure some of you are familiar with um, um, Alberto and Marco and and their work that they've done around DAX. They provide a a host of very useful fiscal calendar formulas that you can leverage. If you go to, um, I think it's called. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. It's a uh, DAX time. I know it's DAX time patterns here. Yep, DAXpatterns.com. And they provide a whole bunch of different DAX calculations that you can leverage for for those of you with fiscal type calendars. So we just want to make you aware of that. If you go to DAXpatterns.com, you can go click on patterns and find all the different time patterns. And they've got a bunch of things on here on using fiscal calendars. All right. Um, well, we're about seven minutes over here. So if if you have any uh, other questions, feel free to send me a, a message on my blog. Um, SQLDusty.com. You can hit up on Twitter at SQLDusty, or I'll even put my uh, my email address on here. Um, let's see here. Come on now, I'm trying to get my Zoom tool here to work for me. So I can type it up here on the screen. You can email me at SQLDusty at gmail.com, um, and and if you've got any questions there, you can do that, or you can tweet me at SQLDusty, and then um, I'll try to respond to those. Um, We'll see how many I get, but um, send me your questions there, and then uh, and then I'll, I'll include those in in the blog post. Well, we definitely appreciate your presentation today. It was very informative. Um, I know that everything going on with Power BI right now is sort of in uh, this constant movement over the past um, probably half year or so, and so these are all yeah, exciting things that we're seeing, um, and I'm sure it'll continue to go through. Um, just uh, keep your everyone keep your eyes out. There's additional presentations that are going to be happening um, throughout February, and March for the uh, past. BI virtual chapter, business intelligence virtual chapter, but we appreciate everyone's participation today. As usual, we will record, this This session has been recorded, and we'll post it to the um, the business intelligence virtual chapter YouTube channel, and you can get that link all um, from the past site. So thank you, everyone, for your participation today. All right. Thank you, Scott, for having me. Bye-bye.